Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to have a go at trying to remove the ethanol out of unleaded petrol. Um, and ironically there's a bottle of bioethanol which is commonly used in little burners and stuff. Um, so we're more familiar with this stuff than we probably realise. Um, so yeah, so this video I'm going to try and remove the ethanol. I wasn't overly aware of ethanol in unleaded fuel um, until it was mentioned to me that E10 is coming at the end of the year and that would be 10% ethanol. So I then find out that yeah, 5% ethanol is already in the fuel, um, but it's going to be going to 10% and apparently there is some concern over that higher percentage. So anyway, so that's what this video will be about. So I've done a little bit of investigating, um, basic investigating, and from what I found, it sort of started back with MTBE, which was methyl tertiary butyl ether. And it was added to fuel to act like an oxygenator. And what that did was it gave it cleaner combustion um, and with a cleaner combustion, you would end up with cleaner or lower emissions at the exhaust. So it reduced the CO2, which is obviously what everything's about today is reducing the CO2. And it also replaced the lead, um, which also had the role of being an anti-knocking agent. Um, so that was how we got onto MTBE. Now, there was an issue with MTBE. It started to be found in the water supplies. Um, so again, there was another health concern over that. So then they needed to replace N N MTBE with something else. Now, since ethanol was already in fuel, um, as a bit of an octane booster, I believe, um, it was just a case of increasing the percentage that was going into the fuel. So, ethanol was seen to be a safer alternative to MTBE, um, and hence we have ethanol in the fuel. So, ethanol is a renewable biofuel made from biomass, and food grain is often used because it's high in sugar and starch, and that's ideal with the yeast to create the fermentation to create ethanol. So, and most modern cars can actually run on it no problem at all. Um, they say that cars after the year 2000 should be actually fine with E10. They're running on E5 now anyway. Um, and because of the more modern um, computerized systems on them, they can adjust and monitor and correct as necessary with that extra 5% um, taking it to 10% ethanol that will be in unleaded fuel at the end of the year. Now, there is some issues obviously with older cars prior to the year 2000, um, especially those with carburetors, where you may need to have the jets adjusted um, and things like that. So, that is one of the concerns um, and obviously ethanol also has another sort of property which is it is attracted to water so one of the differences between older cars and newer cars is newer cars tend to have a more of a closed off um, fuel system thereby preventing vapor going out into the atmosphere and at the same time, that prevents the atmosphere going into the fuel tank. Um, whereas an older car might be completely vented to the outside. Now, when that happens, the ethanol that's in the fuel, and obviously if they increase the ethanol to more, um, once it becomes the atmosphere, the water in the atmosphere gets into the tank, it can actually sort of attract to the ethanol. And the two of them together once become heavier and will then drop out of the fuel and then sink to the bottom of the fuel tank. And this is where 
some of the issues then arise. Um, because once the water and the ethanol are at the bottom of the tank, they can obviously become more corrosive. Um, the water obviously with metal is going to cause rust um, and things like that. And ethanol itself um, can attack rubber um, items. So you can start to get find rubber starts to perish more. Now the other thing is also that once the ethanol and the water are drawn into the fuel system, that can also cause some issues um, with overheating because the mixture is then leaner and so you're actually going to end up with a combustion which is hotter so the valve seats in theory could become damaged due to that extra heat. Um, now this is often noticed with garden machinery because we fill up our fuel tanks in the lawnmowers and stuff and often leave them over winter and then what happens is obviously the ethanol attracts the moisture out of the air um, and then come the summer when we want to start them the water and ethanol have mixed drop to the bottom through phase separation and then they go through to the lawnmower to your carburetor and you start to get the sort of spluttering um, where the the engines actually sort of trying to run on water as well so that can be the issue there and the other thing that can also be found is that you can get like a gummy deposit um, starting to form um, and that obviously blocks jets on the carburettors and things like that so there is concern for older vehicles now most of the fuel companies seem to say that actually the fuel in the car shouldn't be more than a month old um, so once it's over a month they tend to say that you're going to need to add one third um, of fresh fuel to basically dry the system out because what's going to happen is after a month some of the um, volatile components will evaporate and obviously with ethanol in there you're going to get the possibility of phase separation happening with it coming into it so they advise you add fresh fuel almost like to dry the fuel and hopefully avoid the phase separation so ethanol does seem to create some issues that you wouldn't normally have um, that perhaps we need to now be aware of um, but anyway so i'm gonna today try and remove the ethanol out of five liters of unleaded um, just out of interest to see what quantity of ethanol is in there um, now I will be using deionized water because technically you shouldn't actually use tap water because that's going to put impurities into the fuel so I'll use one litre of deionized um, now the only thing is once the ethanol has been removed in theory you should probably put an octane booster back in um, because you are going to be changing the sort of ingredients of the fuel so it's not all as simple as just take the ethanol out and things are better um, there can be issues as well um, but anyway so I'll crack on with that today and just take the ethanol out um, just out of interest <laughs> And thank you for watching, and hopefully you'll find this of interest. So on to the task of removing the ethanol using water to cause phase separation. Ideally, you'd do this outside and give some consideration to eye and fire protection. So with the fire extinguisher close at hand and some eye protection and face protection, I'm going to measure 5 litres of unleaded petrol. So we'll speed this part up and this is my chosen container which actually turned out to be far from ideal as you'll see later on. So we put in five litres, there's our one, two, three, four and five. 
Now really you do want to use a sealed container for this and not a watering can as such. So then I'm going to take my deionized water. I'm using deionized because if you use tap water you run the risk of actually adding impurities into the petrol. So I'm just adding a little bit of food colouring so that we can see this a little bit easier once it's actually mixed in with the petrol. So I'm now going to decant the petrol into a bigger container for shaking. Now this is where things do start to leak a little bit. So like I say these containers I thought would have been quite ideal um, but sadly not. So we've got exactly one litre of deionized blue water which hopefully will cause phase separation in the petrol. So we'll put the lid on and we'll shake it and put petrol everywhere. Not good. So <laughs> yeah quite a bit of petrol there. Definitely not a safe process this, not in that container. Um, you really want to be outside if you do do this. So hopefully I'm demonstrating the dangers of playing with petrol here. Now I'm going to use two Demijohns, they only hold 5 litres each so that's a little bit of a problem because I need to do 6 litres. And Demijohns are definitely not ideal either. They're ideal for the camera so you can actually see the blue water. Um, but for playing with petrol they're far from ideal. So we've got our mixture in there now and we've sort of separated it into two. Two equal amounts and I'm going to give these another shake um, with hopefully the petrol not going everywhere. Again the problem with Demijohns is if you were to drop one that could be quite disastrous especially with petrol going everywhere. Right so we're going to give it a good shake now. So at least it didn't leak everywhere which was something. And we do the same again for this one. And then what we're going to do is leave them to stand for a while. Ideally you'd probably do this overnight but it doesn't actually take long for the separation to occur and it seems to have settled down now so I'm going to conclude after a few hours that I'm ready to process this. So now the tricky task of sucking the ethanol and water out from the bottom. Now I could have turned the Demijohns upside down and then tried to um, tap the blue water off with the ethanol in it but again I had a bit of a fear there that if I turned them upside down it leaked we're going to have petrol everywhere. So for safety I came up with the idea of syringing it out and that was pretty problematical as you'll see because then as you pull the syringe up some of the water and ethanol drops back in again. So you really do want to be using some sort of container where you turn it upside down and you just bleed off the water and ethanol. And as you can see holding a demijohn on its edge using a sponge again it's not ideal because if that demijohn was to lose balance and roll and smash on the floor you could be in some big trouble. But anyway, so since this is for demonstration purposes only, and well, I did get there in the end, so my syringe wasn't very happy though with the petrol. It seemed to damage the seals in the syringe and then the syringe wasn't syringing very well. But anyway, so we've got our container there with one litre of blue 
water and ethanol. There is a little bit of petrol there on the top. So I'm going to try and remove that as well. So that's our original one litre now. We can put that to one side and focus on the remaining blue liquid. So hopefully that remaining blue liquid should be the equivalent of the ethanol that was in the petrol from manufacture. And we could expect to see anything up to 250 millilitres per 5 litres for E5 fuel. So again we'll get our trusty useless syringe back out that keeps jamming in this cylinder. So with a lot of force we managed to get this blue liquid back out. And there's our 250 millilitres. So there's definitely some petrol there floating on the surface that we're going to have to try and remove. So I'll try and carefully pour that petrol off without getting the blue in there as well. It's a lot of playing around with petrol really. So you do really need a separatory funnel for this. But then saying that, they're extremely expensive and they're also made of glass. So again you've got the danger of breaking them. So now we're looking at about a quarter of a litre which is what we would expect to see. So I still did a bit more separating. So as I emptied the petrol out of these demijohns, there was a little bit of blue water and ethanol mix still left. So then I'm gradually trying to return all the unleaded petrol back to the container. So I'm just left with that blue mixture. So this is the last of it. It's actually very tricky to actually separate as you can see. So we'll put our litre back in now. So this should be um, a lot more accurate. So I should have been high as a kite from all these fumes that I've just been breathing in. So that's our concluding extraction and we have got there 0.25 litres which is 250 millilitres so that is a successful conclusion. So to conclude if this fuel had only 5% ethanol being E5 we could expect to see anything up to 50 millilitres per litre or 250 millilitres per 5 litres. This does seem to be fairly accurate as I extracted just under 250 millilitres from 5 litres. When E10 comes out, we could possibly see anything up to 100 millilitres of ethanol per every one litre of fuel. So if you were to remove your ethanol using the method I showed with glass demijohns would be extremely dangerous. The risk of them falling or smashing is so high and with the explosive nature of petrol it just wouldn't be sensible. Using a 10 litre plastic container with a small bleed off tap fitted would be more feasible and safe. But again, pouring petrol from container to container has so many fire and health risks to consider first. So you've been watching Removing Ethanol from Unleaded Petrol. And thank you for watching and I hope this video helps you consider your safety if removing ethanol from petrol. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in August 2021. I can be found on Instagram and Facebook under Coats and Gators.